Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a beach coastal theme. One of my viewers asked me if I could do some thrift flips with that theme and I thought it would be a fun challenge. I did not plan ahead for this video. So I just went through my thrifted stash, picked out some stuff to see if I could turn it into beautiful beach coastal type decor. I think y'all gonna enjoy this video. Let's go ahead and get started. And I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I think that these three fusion colors look absolutely beautiful together and they definitely give me coastal vibes. So I want to use them on a book set. So I got three different books from smallest to largest and we're going to be painting them with these colors. I don't want to have to worry about getting paint on the pages. So I'm just wrapping it with a plastic bag. That way I can paint knowing that my white pages are safe. I've been seeing lots of decorative books in the home decor stores and they are not cheap. So this is a great way to take a book that you've thrifted. They are at the thrift stores and at estate sales and also garage sales for very inexpensive. So you can pick out exactly the size that you want and update it to something that will look amazing in your home and your own decor style. Also, don't forget to paint the inside of the book because you will be able to see that as well. So you don't want that color peeking through. I think it's just easier to paint the whole inside cover and one coat right here is sufficient. Look how beautiful this angle hook color is. Look at these three colors together. Perfection. I got one coat of paint on the books, but I can still see the title of the book very well in Boston to the Spine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some spackle or if you have some joint compound that would also work. I'm just going to rub it on the spine of the book. I'm going to let it dry and then I'm just going to kind of sand it smooth. What I've also, what I could have done from the beginning is add the fresco texturing powder and add some texture to this piece, but I think this will work fine and this will be really quick. Y'all look how beautifully these colors look together. Now we need to embellish. So I'm going to be using IOD's Seashore stamp. In this stamp, you get two pages of beautiful seashore coastal images. I put my stamp on my thin mount and now I'm going to use black ink. I want all of the stamps to have the same ink on each book. So I think black is the best option. So I'm going to ink it up and then I'm going to put it right in the center of the book. Look how beautiful that came out. I love these stamps because there's tons of line detail. So when you stamp it, it looks like a beautiful vintage image. So my plan is to put it right in the center. And then I'm also going to put one right here. That way there will be two ways for you to style the book. You could style it this way, like a piece of art. Or you could stack them together and they'll all have stamps right here. I decided to go with these larger shells on the front of the books. Obviously, I think white ink would stand out better on this dark blue color. But like I said, I want all of the ink colors to match on the book. So I'm hoping that it works out and this stands out enough. If you live in a coastal area, I definitely think you need this set of stamps. They are so beautiful. I feel like you could use it for so many different projects. Can you imagine this on some pillows or ooh, you could even make some custom curtains. I have so many ideas. Okay, I feel like that is good. It stands out pretty good on this dark blue color. <gasps> it's looking so good already. And now we just need to stand the spines. For the spines, I just picked out some cute smaller images that would fit on here. Spine's going to be a little bit more tricky. I have it on my thin mount and I am going to push it right on the bottom. I want them all to be on the bottom. And let's see if this works. <gasps> that looks so good. 
All right, I figured out a little hack. So these bigger spines kind of go in. I don't know if y'all could see that and I really need it to be stiff. This is the little piece that comes with your IOD transfers and it fits perfectly into the spine. And now I have a nice stiff surface in order to place my stamp. Let's do this little seahorse. <gasps> Adorable. All right, I wanna throw in one more very quick, simple book idea. So you take a paper bag book that you can literally find at any thrift store or garage sale, go to the blankest page they have and just pull off the cover and the rest of the pages. Now you have a nice neutral surface to work with. I'm gonna take some more stamps from the Seashore IOD stamp. I like these two seahorses. I'm gonna ink them up with black ink and just stamp the top of this book. And this will make not only a beautiful piece of decor, but it also could be a piece of art if you want it. You could stamp some paper, frame it, lots of options. Look how cute that is. I always pick up vintage seashells when I find them at estate sales. I think they are a beautiful, classic, timeless look. And I personally love using them to decorate in my home. And if you love these three shells that I actually use to style in this video, they are available on my website, juliesdesignsandsigns.com. I hope y'all are enjoying the video so far. I want to take a moment to tell y'all about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. If you do not know what Squarespace is, it is an online hosting platform, and that is who actually hosts my e-commerce store, juliesdesignsandsigns.com. And whether you have an online store, a local business, if you just want to create a portfolio or blog or offer a service, Squarespace has so many different options to host your website. So Squarespace has everything that you need to grow your business online. You can create a website using their very easy to use templates, designer fonts, color palettes. You can easily create an e-commerce store and you can also market your business by connecting your social accounts and by using their email campaigns. Squarespace is extremely user friendly. Even if you have no designer background, they have all these templates for you to pick from. It is really so easy, you guys. So if you're interested in trying out Squarespace, y'all go to squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs and they are giving my viewers 10% off when you use code Julie's Designs and Signs and I will have a link to everything in the description below for y'all. This book is already a beautiful shade of blue. So I thought it would be fun to add some seashell molds to the spine. When using a mold, the first thing you wanna do is dust it with cornstarch. That way your clay doesn't stick to the piece. I don't know which ones I'm using yet. So I'm just gonna dust the whole thing. And if you have some excess, you can just tap it out. I'm using IOD air dry clay and you just push it into the mold and it has these micro rims. So I just run my finger across and all of the excess just comes right off. Super easy to use. And like I said, I don't know exactly what molds I want to use. So I'm just going to probably fill them all with clay. That way I have lots of options. Your molds will pop out really easy. I just kind of bend the mold a little bit and they come right out with a little sand dollar, the little seashell. So I'm gonna take all these out and then I'm just going to play with them on the spine of the book and see what arrangement would look best. This is the arrangement that I have come up with. I really like the starfish, so I wanted to use a lot of those. I'm imagining this as the bottom of the book and this as the top. 
So if it's lying this way, I think it would be pretty to have some of the, the shells kind of coming over the top. So now we just need to glue everything down. I've misplaced my regular Gorilla Glue that I normally use for molds. So I'm going to be using this Gorilla Wood Glue and it should work fine. I do not wait for my molds to dry. I put them on when they're wet, especially when I want to put them on around the surfaces. Or in this case, I'm going to be putting them over the edge of the book. So I want them to kind of curve. So I'm going to start with the pieces that are on the bottom because I do like how these are overlapping. So I did the sand dollar and now I'm going to do the big starfish. When you're gluing the pieces on, if you have a little bit of excess glue, take a dry brush and you can brush all of the excess off. And then I just wipe it off on a baby wipe and then go back and brush some more. I got all of the pieces on. I did end up changing up the placement because once I took them off, I kind of forgot <laughs> how they went on. And I ended up putting a big piece on top right here. I thought that looked really good. And all of the clay pieces that I made I actually ended up using. So we're not done yet, but we're gonna let it dry for a little bit before we move on to the next step. All right, it's all the way dry and it is looking really great. You could leave it as is. Um, I really like the white with the blue, but I want my molds to pop and I don't want this to seem like two separate pieces. So the first step I'm gonna do is add some fusion and teaking glaze to all of the white molds. I'm using the Stallmaster Artist Brush to apply the antiquing glaze. So it's really easy to kind of get in and get all of the edges of the molds. Now, since I do have molds coming over the top of the book, you will not be able to open this book. It will not be functional, but to me, it's just a piece of decor. So that really doesn't matter, but just keep that in mind. If you are wanting to the book to be able to open and function. You want, want to keep your molds just on the spine. Okay, I had a change of plans. I was going to put antiquing wax just on the molds and then I was going to apply white wax to the whole piece. But I got some antiquing wax on the book and I am loving the way that the antiquing wax is making this blue color look. So the change of plans is that I'm now going to apply the antiquing wax to the entire piece, the book, the molds, everything. So you're going to apply the antiquing wax to your entire piece and then you're going to take a dry paper towel or rag and you just lightly wipe off the excess and let me show y'all the magic that happens on the mold. So all of the antiquing wax will stay in the details and you're gonna wipe off the excess that has the raised details. And look how great this looks. So it just is an instant way to give any surface an aged look. And like I said, I love how the antiquing wax really change the blue and it's still a beautiful blue but now it has an amazing vintage look I thrifted these two pieces. I don't know what they originally were, but I love the color and shape of them. And I don't know if y'all can see, but it has some beautiful crazing on it. This is IOD's entomology transfer. It doesn't really have too many coastal pieces, but it does have these beautiful vintage looking fish. So these are the transfers that I wanna use for this project. I'm going to be using the two smaller fish, so I'm going to cut them out. And if you love butterflies, you're going to love this transfer. There are a ton of butterfly options in this one. Oh, look at these beautiful birds as well. I can't believe I haven't used them yet. But for this project, we're going to use these two fish. They're a nice neutral color. They're kind of taupey with some black details. 
I found the part that had the most crazing. That's the part I want to be the front. And this is a slick surface. So these transfers are going to stick very well to this. So when you put it down, you want to make sure it is the exact placement that you want because they might start to stick right as soon as you put them down. And all of your transfers will come with a transfer tool. So you just take your transfer tool and rub it over the transfer and it will adhere to your surface. I like to rub and lift at the same time. I just feel like that's the quickest way to get a transfer down. So you can see how easily and how quickly this one is coming off. You wanna do the end very slowly, make sure it is all the way down before you fully pull it up. Look at this color combination, it is perfection. They have this part at the top. There must have been a cover. I did not thrift a cap with this, but I do want to cover that part up. So I think nautical jute twine would be an option, but I also had this rope in my stash and it is pretty much the same color as a fish. So I feel like it's going to be a more high end option. So I'm just going to cut a piece of this rope to size and then I am going to hot glue it and just make sure that your seam is in the back of your piece. And I think these came out great. Not only would they look amazing in coastal decor, but I think they would fit into any style of decor. Since I only have one of these transfers left of the fish, I'm feeling the need to add in a project. So I found this block of wood in my workshop that is the perfect size for this fish. I want the pieces to match and look like a collection. So I want to paint the piece of wood and I'm thinking fusion paint in the color raw silk is the closest color to this piece that I've already done. I'm planning on lightly distressing the wood. So I'm thinking just one to two coats of paint on here will be sufficient. I would say that my color selection is pretty spot on. That is a really good match. Now I'm going to come in with some sandpaper and just hit the edges, not because I really want this piece distressed, but I want the edges to be wood and to create kind of like a frame for my piece. Now I'm going to take my fish and I am going to apply him to the wood. I'm going to do the same process. You just take your little tool that comes with your transfer and you rub it and your piece will start to transfer. And I use the fusion paint with the built-in sealer. So the transfers really adhere well to the fusion paint. Look how good this is looking. Wow, this piece came out really great. It looks so good with the other little pieces I got. Now this could be used as a piece of decor. It'd be a great shelf sitter, or you could also use it as a riser and put stuff on top of it. All right, this is a little hack I figured out a while back and I never shared it with y'all. So there's these grid lines that comes on your transfer. And if you rub them on your piece, the black ink starts to come off and goes onto your piece for a really, really cool effect. If that's what you're going for, I think with all the black lines in this fish, it works perfectly. Let me bring it in close so y'all could really see what I'm talking about. You see all the little black lines? I love that. So if you want that, use your leftover little grid line to create a little kind of antiquing look to your piece. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. I don't know about y'all, but I sure had a lot of fun. I actually had way more ideas than I had time for. So if you enjoyed this beach coastal thrift flip type video, definitely let me know because I would like to create more of these in the future. But in today's video, y'all please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project that I created. 
Also, if you loved the colors that I used, you are going to enjoy this announcement. I have decided to do a color of the month club. Now, what does that mean? Every single month when I have the vintage drop, I will be shipping out four special fusion colors that I have custom picked for that month. So this is June's box. And when I think of June, I think of the beach. These colors totally remind me of the beach. So it is going to be $28 and that does include shipping. So it's just $28 for the four colors. And I am actually super excited about July's box because it's gonna be colors that I don't even have on the website. So if you are interested in joining the Color of the Month Club, I will have a link in the description below for y'all. I am super excited about it. I can't wait to see what y'all create with these colors. I also thought about one month maybe doing milk paint samples because y'all know I am obsessed with milk paint and I know a lot of y'all have never tried it. So that might be a good option, but y'all leave a comment. Let me know what y'all think about that. And like I said, these will be shipped out when the orders for the vintage drop are already shipped out. If you did not order anything for the vintage drop, no big deal, guys, your color of the month will be shipped out. I just figured it'd be easier to kind of ship everything out at the same time. So I hope y'all enjoyed today's video and don't forget that that all the products and projects that I created in today's video are available on my website, juliesdesignsandsigns.com. And of course, I'll have a link to everything in the description below. And if you're interested in starting your own Squarespace website, y'all go to squarespace.com slash juliesdesignsandsigns and they are giving my viewers 10% off. Y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all next week for another DIY video.